Hello. Today is the second lesson of the course Probability and Statistics. We are going to see what sample space and events are. Notions we uh, find in probabilities. We are going to cover some theoretical material we need in the probabilities in order to study, as we said before, statistics. In today's lesson, we are going to see some basic definitions, some definitions about what the sample space is and what the events are. Also, we are going to see examples to put in practice everything we are going to learn in theory. We are going to see through examples what the sample space and what the events are, and then we are going to put the mathematical background. We see, uh, we define what the event and the sa sample space uh, is. We start with our first example to uh, see what uh, the sample space is. Our first experiment is toss a coin. We know that um, this is an experiment that results in unknown outcomes, outcomes that cannot be predicted. So it is, um, we have to study this experiment in order to see what are probabilities of obtaining certain outcomes. When um, we toss a coin, of course, we know that um, the possible outcomes in this case are either obtaining a head or obtaining a tail. There are no other possible outcomes, no matter how many times we toss the coin. Every time we perform the same experiment, we are going to expect to see one to observe one of these two experiments, to observe either a head or a tail. Another example with um, more possible outcomes is if we roll a die. The possible outcomes in this case are not only two, like in the previous example. We have six possible outcomes. We have possible outcome 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. So each time we perform this uh, experiment with uh, unknown um, results, we cannot know beforehand what we are going to uh, observe. We do uh, expect, though, to observe one of these six numbers. Of course, if we are talking about uh, the standard uh, die with the six possible outcomes. Let's see another example. The experiment of rolling a pair of dice, a red and a green one. In this experiment, we have 36 possible outcomes. They can be seen in this table. We see that we have colored uh, each die. The first one, we color it with the green color, and the second one with the red color. So we can distinguish between the outcomes of uh, each die. This example is a bit more complicated than the ones we've seen before. The outcomes are not single uh, numbers. They are not um, just, they, they, they consist of two numbers. They consist of pairs. So if the first die brings a four and then the green one brings a four and the red one brings a three. 
it's actually the outcome 4 comma 3 is the pair 4 comma 3 also another example if we observe a 2 in the red die and a 1 in the green is the pair 1 comma 2 in this case we have uh, to understand that the 3 comma 2 is different than the t uh, 2 comma 3 so bringing a 3 for the green die and a 2 for the red one is different than bringing a 2 for the green and a 3 for the red we can see the two points here they are different elements of our um, table on the other hand the 6 for the green die and the 6 for the red appears only once in our table because a 6 in the red and a 6 in the green would again be the same point. The examples we have seen until now, um, the possible outcomes we can observe can be written down, they can be countable. We can say that uh, they are 1, 2, 3, 5, 36 in the case of uh, the two dice. Now we are going to see another example where the sample space doesn't have countably many elements. Assume that we want to measure the duration of the next phone call at a certain line. We are um, measuring the phone calls in minutes and in this case the possible outcomes are any numbers greater than zero. We see the difference between this example and the previous ones. In this case we cannot say that um, the possible outcomes are these particular numbers. It's actually a group of numbers um, greater than zero. So it is more difficult to um, write down what the sample space is if we don't use mathematics. There are many examples that um, in everyday life can give us um, outcomes that uh, are not countably many. So uh, this group of, um, of examples is um, very important for this group of examples it is very important to understand exactly what the sample space is. For this particular example we know that um, a phone call uh, will last more than zero minutes but um, and in theory we can assume that it can actually go on forever. There is no upper limit in the uh, phone call unless uh, we can say that um, after some, some time, let's say after uh, two hours, after 120 minutes, the phone call um, will uh, end. Then we can say that our sample space, our possible outcomes, is our numbers between 0 and 120. Otherwise, we cannot set an upper limit. We cannot say up to which number we can go and in theory we can get any large number. So the set of all possible outcomes is called a sample space. It is denoted usually by one of the letters capital letter S or the capital Greek letter omega. In books 
in statistics books or probability books, we can find any of these letters used. For this course, from now on, we're going to use the capital letter S when denoting the sample space. We are going to go back to our examples and um, look one by one and see now how the sample space is defined. What is exactly the sample space in our examples. Back to our experiment when tossing a coin. The possible outcomes are head or tail. So the sample space in this case would be obtaining a head or a tail. We denote by H the head and by T the tail. We see that in these cases when um, the experiment is, is simple, it's very simple to uh, find out what the sp sample space is. Later on we are going to see more complicated examples and see that we have to think a bit um, to find out exa exactly what our sample space is. Our second example, roll, uh, rolling a die, the possible outcomes in this case are the six numbers one to six. In this case, the sample space is any number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 or 6. Again, in this example, although we have more than two possible outcomes, a more complicated example than the previous one is still a quite easy example in order to understand what the sample space is. It is one of the six numbers, one to six. Now, going back again to rolling the pair of dice, the red and the green one, the sample space in this case are pairs of numbers, consists of pairs of numbers. So, the sample space would consist of all of these 36 pairs. When we are working with maths, we would like to write down um, all information in the most compact possible way. Here we have two dice and we see that it is a bit difficult to produce a table with the 36 outcomes. So if we even imagine a case with more dice, it's m even more difficult to write all possible outcomes down. So we are going to use mathematics in order to denote the sample space. In this case, our pairs are, can be written down as pairs i, j, where i and j are all numbers between, any number between 1 and 6. So, for example, if we are interested in um, observing, um, if we are interested in um, the event 3 for the green dice and a red, a, a 3 for the red one, it's this outcome here 3 comma 3. We understand this now it is easy to um, if we put a 3 for i and a 3 for j we are going to obtain this pair. All 36 pairs can be obtained from this formula by changing i and j every time to one of the numbers 1 to 6, we can obtain all these numbers. Again, we have to 
say that 3,2 is different than 2,3 and we see that it can be obtained if we put 2 in the i and 3 in the j and 3 in the i and 2 in the j for the first pair. Now, as we said, it is difficult to write down sometimes all possible elements of a sample space. Let's see a generalization of the example of the dice. So if we have n dice and we would like to write down the sample space, When n is big, is more than 2, let's say 3 or more, we understand that writing all possible outcomes down would be very difficult, if not impossible. Using maths, though, we can write S as being the set that contains I1, I2, 2, I, N, where I1, 2, I, N can get any number between 1 and 6. We see now that using mathematics it is easier to write the sample space instead of writing every single element in the sample space. Another experiment would be to measure the duration of the next phone call in minutes. In this case, the possible outcomes we've seen would be any number greater than zero, and the sample space is actually any number greater than zero. It would be very difficult to write down, in this case impossible, to write down every single element that belongs in A. Because A has infinite uh, number of elements. This is um, di a different example than the previous ones where of course it was difficult to write down uh, all points in the sample space but not impossible. In this case though it is impossible. And so we, need, we would need to um, use maths to describe uh, all points that belong in the sample space. Another such example would be if we throw a coin, if we toss a coin, We toss a coin many times and we want to stop when we observe the first head. So the sample space, the possible outcomes in this case would be either observe a head the first time we toss the coin, observe a head the second time we, observe, we toss the coin and so on. So, theoretically again, this could go on forever. Again, in this sample space, although um, the outcomes are discrete, we can see that we can dis distinguish between each outcome, it's again infinite many. There are infinite number of elements in the sample space. We 
are going to see some examples in events. The experiment of tossing a coin has the possible outcomes of head or tail. We could be interested in any event, um, either that a head uh, is observed or a tail is observed. This sample space, as we have seen, has only two possible outcomes and the event that we could be interested could be um, one of these um, elements in the sample space. Could be observing a head or observing a tail. When we have a more complicated example, like when we roll a die, the possible outcomes in this case are six, and the event we may be interested could be either one of these single elements, like observing a two, a three, and so on, or could be a group of um, numbers that we are interested in. For example, if we are interested in the event of observing an even number, we are actually not interested in um, observing a single number, but observing a group of numbers. In this case, we are interested in observing a two, a four, or a six. So A, the set, the event we are interested would consist of these three numbers, two, four, or six. Again, we are going to see when um, we do not have single elements, but we have pairs of elements, like when rolling two uh, dice, what happens? What, is, what are the events in this case? So, in the experiment of rolling a pair of dice, a red and a green one, we observe again that the sample space is um, shown in this table. Now, we may be interested in the event that at least one six has occurred. This event can be shown in the table as the highlighted uh, light blue color in this case. Um, it's the elements 1, 6, 2, 6, 3, 6, and so on. We can see that when we say that we are interested in at least 1, 6, we don't care if we have a 6 in the red observed from the red uh, die and a 6 from the green one. Um, the outcome 6 comma 6 is in our event. Events could be other groups as well, other groups of um, elements, other groups of pairs of elements from the sample space. In the experiment of measuring the duration of the next phone call in minutes, with possible outcomes any number greater than zero, we may be interested in the event that a phone call lasted less than five minutes. In this case, we have seen that um, the sample space consists of infinitely many elements. Um, they are not countable. And um, the events, the same thing happens for the events as well. The events do not consist of uh, discrete, of countably uh, many elements. So when we are interested in the event that a phone call lasted less than five minutes, we are actually interested in the event that consists of numbers, all numbers between zero and five. 
So as we have seen till now, um, we can define the event in mathematical terms as the subset of S, it is a collection of possible outcomes. It is usually denoted by a capital letter of the alphabet A, B, C and so on. Occurrence of an event. We say that an event A occurs if the outcome of the experiment belongs to event A. When we perform an experiment, we have made clear what the um, sample space is and what the um, events we are interested in are. Then, of course, after we perform uh, the experiment, we would like to know if the event we are interested in has occurred or not. So, as we have seen here, we are going to see in our examples when do we say that an event has occurred. When rolling a die, the possible outcomes, the six possible outcomes um, that belong to the sample space are shown here. We said that we may be interested, for example, in the event that we observe an even number, in the event A equals 2, 4 or 6. In this case, we are going to say that the event A actually occurred if we observe a 2, if we observe a 4 or if we observe a 6. On the other hand, if we observe a 3, a 1, a 3, or a 5, then we say that the event A hasn't occurred. Subset of an event, the event B, would call the subset of the event A and be denoted like we write it here, if whenever B occurs, A occurs too. We are interested in um, knowing if an event is a subset of another event, as um, later on we are going to see um, that um, when we use probabilities, when um, we calculate probabilities, it's uh, much easier uh, to make these calculations if we can know that uh, an event is a subset of another event. Going back to the example of rolling a die, the, possible, the six possible outcomes are 1 to 6. We are interested in the event of uh, observing an even number and this is denoted by um, the set A which consists of elements 2, 4 and 6. Another event in this case could be event B, consisting of elements 2 and 4. Also another event could be event C, consisting of elements 3 and 4. Now, we say that B is a subset of A. B is a subset of A because whenever B occurs, a occurs too. So if we observe a 2 or we observe a 4, then we know that A has happened too. There, the other way around is not true. We cannot say that A is a subset of B because although when 2 or 4 occurs, and in this case B occurs too, the case when 6 occurs, which is an element of A, in this case B does not occur. So in this case A would not be a subset 
of B. Also, C is not a subset of A. We see that if 4 occurs, then A has occurred, but if 3 occurs, then A hasn't occurred. So, in order that a um, set is a subset of another set, every element of one set must belong to the other set too. Let's work through our example we've seen before with tossing a coin. If in this case we are interested in the event A, that a head occurs, after an even number of throws. In this case, A is actually consisting of elements tail, head, tail, 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 head, and so on. A subset of A could be the event B of observing a head in two or four throws. We see that when B occurs, then A occurs too. If we have um, observed a head in two throws or in four throws, we actually have observed one of the elements of uh, event A. So what we have seen till now is um, we have seen what event and what sample space is. We have seen several examples and um, we have seen that um, we have to sometimes to use mathematics to make clear what the sample space is. In um, very simple ex examples is um, easy to um, describe what the sample space is, but when the example becomes more complicated, we need to use maths uh, to write down the sample space. When we perform an experiment, it is important to make clear what the sample space is. We cannot assign probabilities, we cannot talk about probabilities if we don't know exactly what the sample space is. Also, we need to know exactly what the event that we are interested in is. If we don't know what we are interested in, there is no point of um, finding a probability of something occurring or not. Um, so, every time we perform an experiment, we have uh, to uh, write down clearly the sample space, the events, and then go on and talk about probabilities. We have seen um, what the sample space is in the case that um, we have um, discrete um, outcomes, we have continuous outcomes, we have um, countably many uh, elements in uh, our sample space or uncountably many elements in the sample space. No matter what um, the experiment is, in which case we are, we can always uh, write down, we can always understand 
what the sample space is. So, summarizing, we have seen some basic definitions. We have defined the sample space. We have defined the events in mathematical terms. And we have seen several examples to cover all um, these new no notions seen uh, in this lesson. In the next lesson, we are going to see some uh, operations using sample space, using sets, um, that denote the sample space and the events. For more information on uh, this course, you can uh, see at the web page uh, of uh, Netuno MedNet U project.